Hey guys, welcome to Parents Against Alienation. My name is AJ and today I'm going to be sharing with you how I became an alienated parent. So as a reminder, this channel is me sharing my experience from the point of view of the targeted parent. So by definition, a child who is an alienated child is one who unjustifiably rejects a loving parent. And typically it's because of the manipulation of the other parent who may or may not know what they are doing. So in my case, that it's a very confusing thing because, and I'm, I suspect this would be the case with everyone, because I had loving relationships with my children and we had our normal difficulties and suddenly I'm being accused of abuse. And I've got police knocking at my door and the need to call for criminal defense attorneys to help protect against these false allegations. And, and so it came as quite a shock because, uh, and was very confusing because I had not done anything that would warrant any child rejecting me. Um, and yet that's the conclusion they came to. It seemed so extreme that the response to, well, I didn't like this and I didn't like that um, that their their answer to that would be the cruel rejection of that parent. And it crushed me. And And even to this day, I still struggle with the pain that comes inevitably from these children leaving our lives when they're supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be able to help my daughter get ready for her prom date. I'm supposed to be able to be here and have her friends come over and hang out and play. Uh, sorry, hang out. They're, they're too old to play. Back when she was here, it was play. Right now it's hang out. Um, and I, I don't get the daily interactions with them. I get a very, you know, superficial, curt um, text response. And thank goodness I get that now because for two and three years respectively with each child, I didn't have anything. I didn't even get to hear their voice because I was, when I would call, I was told no, most of the time by their dad. And the things that I would hear would be things like, oh, well, they don't want to talk to you and you abandoned them and you are an abusive, manipulative, controlling person and they're finally seeing it. Um, and so I went on for quite a period of time with nothing no contact, not knowing how they were doing, falling asleep, wondering if they were okay. And knowing that if they weren't, I could do little to help because I hardly even knew where they were. Um, the pain and suffering that a targeted parent goes through from my perspective is it is significant. It is quite literally the most painful thing I've ever had to go through. And and so we would do anything, right? We would do anything to try and, and help the situation. Um, in my case, I'm going to go back a little bit because I really didn't see this coming. I had no idea what parental alienation was until a year and a half ago. And, and so while I knew the whole time that I was divorced from their father um, for more than a decade, I knew there was weird crap going on. I knew he was an odd duck. I knew there was, um, these situations that were happening were like outlandish and, and not normal and, and they were damaging at the time. They were very, very damaging. I mean, I, I had plenty of times where my children were upset at me because of something their dad said about me. Um, case in point, my boys came home when they were somewhere around age 10. Um, and they came home and said, dad says that when you were pregnant with us and you have found out that we were boys that you didn't want us anymore, that you never loved us because we were boys. So all you wanted was girls. And dad says that you hate all men. So I of course said that is not true, right? And we spent a good year trying to work through that one with them. And, and, um, um, I think at the time I just thought, okay, let me talk to them about this. Let me share with them how this is not true. Um, 
let me help them fix in their minds that what their dad said was wrong and it's and and that I I do love them and I do want them in my lives and and I always wanted them I always loved them and so I said about the best I could and I I can't remember right now how how I handled each situation particularly but I set out the best I could in each situation to just deal with it and and try not to drag their dad into it or try not to drag him down in the process but to just try to respectfully help the child see the truth and um and then we moved on and you just think oh it's behind us what I didn't know is that for 13 years and really more than that but for that whole 13 years each one of these things was really like layered upon each other you know and you have these multiple layers of of alienating behaviors by the the alienating parent who builds this distrust in the child so that they question me they don't trust me they think that I'm controlling them um, or being manipulative. And and he does it in a very, most of the time, covert way. Um, and so they don't really see the way he's doing is wrong because, oh, dad's not saying anything mean about you. No, that's not mean. Dad's just trying to like help me. Or dad, and in an instance when they left and, and they were talking about like how they disliked certain um, you know consequences they might have in my home, he would, empathize with them and feel for them and tell them things like oh yeah your mom used to do that to me too and and wow you know you in order for you to have a good relationship with your mom you better move out um and move away from her and oh she did that to me too and that's why we're divorced and when when you're older I'll share with you more about her and so it's this it's this method of, of convincing the child that they're not safe to be with me and that they're they should question um everything you know, I have my daughter right now is saying she doesn't, she doesn't believe, trust anything. She doesn't, she's skeptical of everything to the point that it's almost like a disorder that she is so skeptical of everything that she doesn't even believe truth, which would be things that she knows to be true, that she witnessed to be true. And then she's so questioning, now she's questioning my motive. Um, and so it's very destructive. I did not see it coming and I have experienced extreme amounts of pain from it. Um, just a little bit of back history. I was married 20 years ago. We got, we had a kid a year later. I should back up. We dated for eight days. He proposed, I accepted. Two and a half months later, we were married. A year later, we had our first child. 15 months later, had our second child. 18 months later, had our third child. Two years later, I found myself desperate to get out. Um, there, was a, there was physical abuse, verbal abuse, sexual abuse, mental abuse. And when I left, that was the, the true beginning of our horror story. And, and I didn't know it. I just thought we could get out and we would be okay. And I was thankful that I was a survivor of, of an abusive relationship and that I could restart my life. And um, little did I know that all the things that he would do along the way, which I will share with you in other videos, um, would actually just lay the, the framework for, for my kid's rejection of me. And, and so I just kept thinking positively. I had no reason to engage in a negative way towards their father. I didn't want to. I had no reason or desire to try to say anything ill about him. I just wanted to live my life with my kids. That's all I wanted. And yet here I am dealing with it. And, and really my, my main, what I find with these videos is that they help me process what's happened. It helps me to feel like, okay, I'm journaling this and I'm also doing it in a way that feels therapeutic to me. And hopefully my, my ultimate hope with this channel is to bring to light parental alienation, what it really looks like from the perspective of the targeted parent. I am not a perfect parent, but I certainly know, I know fact and I know that that a lot of the positions that they take when, when, you're ta when you're dealing with an alienated child or dealing with a narcissistic ex who, who alienates the children from you, a lot of what you deal with, at least in my situation, is that they will present to you something that they will say is truth, but it's just their opinion. It's just their feelings. It's not truth. It's how they feel about what happened. 
and they call that their truth. And so this, this idea of my truth or your truth, it's, it's, there is the truth. And then there's your feelings with the truth. And so I'm hoping to be able to share with you truth, what really happened, how I think that played a role, and hopefully maybe you can catch yours early and not have a severe case of alienation like I am in right now and trying to dig myself out. So with that, um, this, you know, this video is, is done, but I'm going to be having a lot more videos because I want to share everything. I want to get it out there. I, I have had such a bad experience, not only with, with the alienation from the kids and their dad, but also with the court system. And I think that deserves to be put out there so that parents can make sound decisions when they're dealing with things like this. Um, ultimately, the number, the two things I would, I would say are so important is catch early alienation early and put a stop to it fast. And two, love, 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 love your children double, quadruple, whatever, as much as you can, quadruple what your efforts were before and just love them so that they know you're there for them.